Welcome to the Weather Insights Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner, and we are recording this on Labor Day, Monday, September 2nd. Happy Labor Day, everyone. Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. If you're in Southeast Texas with us, it wasn't exactly rain-free. We've been having rain off and on just the last few days, and that's going to kind of loosely top, tie in with the tropics discussion uh, on a couple different fronts. One, we've got this disturbance just south of Galveston that seems like it's been there forever, but National Hurricane Center now only giving that a 0% chance of development. <laughs> so uh, they've uh, taken the chance of development out of it. Now it's just going to be a broad area of disturbed weather and continue to make rainforest around here. But we're also going to talk later on about um, some a low pressure trough that's going to be dipping in and could affect these next two systems. Disturbance number, number two is kind of the headline and has been for a while, although it has been reduced from a 50% chance of development to a 40% chance of development. Still a broad area of low pressure, very disorganized, trying to get some traction as it's making its way across the Caribbean there. But it does appear to be entering a more favorable environment as it gets to the western side of the Caribbean. There's less wind shear. Of course, the water uh, is warm up, warm enough and has been warm enough. And then it'll be interesting to see if it actually does develop if that development will uh, influence the storm possibly turning north if it makes it to the Gulf. So a lot of ifs in there because there are a lot of ifs, a lot of variables playing with this particular system. That's why the National Hurricane Center has gone back and forth on the chances of development for, for where it stands right now, 40% over the next seven days and 0% over the next 48 hours. It's just in too harsh of an environment. National Hurricane Center feels like for it to develop in the next couple of days. And then we have our last disturbance, uh, Disturbance 3, coming off the African coast. This one now up to a 40% chance of development, jumping up to 40% from 20% yesterday. And uh, it's getting active down there in the in the intertropical convergence zone, which we expect this time of year, Jeff. But uh, um, it's uh, looking a little bit more impressive as far as convection. You can see it here on the infrared satellite, that line of convection coming off the African coast. And then you see a little bit of break in there. There's actually a lot of dry air and dust north of there, not not terrible, but um, it, it is south of that area, that area in the um, eastern Atlantic. But then when you get over to Disturbance 2, around uh, that area, there's very light dust just south of that dust and dry air, and then a pocket of um, uh, dry air above it but really some easterly wind shear that it's fighting in that area. But again, as it moves further west in the Caribbean, could move into a potentially more favorable environment. And then, uh, of course, disturbance number one we talked about, now zero chance of development. And going back to disturbance number two, Jeff, the 850 millibar is about the only place I could really see any circulation. There's just nothing there at the surface yet, but it is showing a little bit of spin around 850 millibars. So there's something out there trying to happen with this system. But again, I think it's got a, a ways to go before anything develops with that system. We'll just have to keep an eye on it and see what happens. Yeah, you're right. I mean, here's 850 millibars. So there is there is some spin. So just, you know, reference 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet or so up in the air. So it's not at the surface. So in, in the tropics, you look for things to spin at the surface um and this is this is up a little bit and we can take a look at the at the low level winds in this area and you can see they're pretty much all just easterly and nothing nothing really stands out here as a strong wave axis um maybe some 20 25 mile an hour uh winds here to the north side of the wave axis you can see this wave axis right through here um, and so we'll see that this is, as the Hurricane Center has been saying, this is nothing that's going to develop in the next 48, probably even the next 72 hours. It's later potentially this week when it gets over to the Western Caribbean that we could potentially see uh, some development. We'll take a look at that in a second. Another way you can kind of look at the, the spin in the atmosphere is with what we call precipital water. So this is the um, water vapor, the amount of water through the column uh, of the atmosphere. So from the surface all the way up to, you know, 50, 60,000 feet. Um, this is the column of, of moisture that we have out there. And so you can see there is some dry air here coming off um, that's punching down here into the into the tropics, but it's not overly extensive and extensive. And so for 
uh, September 2nd to have kind of the, the lull we're having out here. It's not completely going to be explained by the dry air coming off the, the continent of Africa. And you can see this monsoon trough here that we have along 10 north. So you can see the easterly uh, movement here of the winds and the northeasterly trades coming down. And so it, it creates this kind of troughiness here, which has been very strong this year. Um, down here in the eastern portion of the Atlantic. And so these tropical waves are having a little bit of a hard time breaking off. And so you can see one here trying to break off here off to the north a little bit. And this is our wave axis here moving into the eastern Caribbean. You can see if you use your imagination, uh, there's some very loose spin. Again, that's probably up around that 850 millibar, 5,000 foot level. And then you can see here our little system here in the northwestern Gulf, our trough axis. Really not a lot of spin going on here, and that's why this is just not going to do anything. Hmm. But you can see there's a lot of moisture uh, lined up here. And so conditions increasingly favorable as we go down the road for our eastern Caribbean uh, tropical wave to potentially develop into something. And this is for Sunday around midnight. Uh, this is the GFS, and this is the ensembles again. Over the weekend, this is what we kind of said last week, look out, the scary model runs are coming. And sure enough, they they were there over the weekend. We had uh, yeah. multiple models obliterating <laughs> the U.S. Gulf Coast. Um, and then the next run, nothing. And, and we've <laughs> sort of seen a downtick, if you will, in the potential for development of this wave over the weekend. The Hurricane Center <laughs> kind of just keeping it in that 40 to 50 percent range, which is a smart thing to do. You don't <laughs> go back and forth with the models every time they change or run. And so at this point, the ensemble approach is, is really the best way to look at this. And, and you can see here, this is the GFS ensembles. Uh, the European ensembles are about the same. And, and it's about 40% of the members showing some development here in the Western Caribbean on Sunday. And then the question mark is, is this suppressed to the south? Does it go into Central America? And uh, that's the end of it. Um, does it manage to eke its way up or track its way up here into the Bay of Campeche? Uh, possibly the southern Gulf of Mexico over here off the eastern coast of Mexico. That's not an unfavorable track for this type of time of year um, when we're talking about tropical storms and hurricanes in early September. And so this is the upper level steering flow for Sunday morning. And you can see we have a really thin ridge here poking in from the east uh, across the Gulf of Mexico. Our system, if there is anything, would be down here south of that. And if it's weak, um, this this little ridge here would force this westward, and there there probably wouldn't be a whole lot to, left to say about it. Uh, but we have this really deep, uh, significant trough here across the Great Lakes, uh, pretty significant for early September. This is actually yeah. going to drive a front down towards the U U.S. Gulf Coast and possibly even through southeast Texas this weekend. So potentially, don't hold me to this, what are we, four or five days out? Uh, we could be talking dew points in the 50s around here Saturday and Sunday, which not completely unheard of this time of year. It happens from time to time. But the question is, what are we dealing with down here? And if something's a little bit stronger, does it fill a tug from this trough? What's interesting is this trough lifts out. So by the time you're talking Wednesday of next week, um, this is Wednesday of next week, you can see the trough has really pulled on out. And so if anything is left down here, it's going to slow down and, and want to meander off to the west northwest and so like you said tons of variables on the table with this feature coming into the caribbean and 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 you know the other thing that's that's really starting to become more of uh the question is what in the world is going on with the atlantic basin and yeah. why are we not producing storms right and left you know this was supposed to be the year right the year of uh you know armageddon if you will in the basin <laughs> and uh, don't get me wrong. We've had storms, you know, barrel in July was, was a very significant hurricane and some of the forecast aspects have turned out actually pretty well this year. A lot of activity West of 60 West, which raises the potential for impacts and minus Ernesto, everything has had some level of impact. Um, well, Ernesto uh, impacted Bermuda, but impact here in the, in the Western part of the basin. And so that, is sort of we was right on the seasonal forecast, but I think there's going to be a lot of uh, looking at what has transpired in August and into the first part here of September as to why the tropics just cannot generate um, systems, uh, especially in the North Atlantic. We're also somewhat seeing this in the Western Pacific, um, and we've seen this the last few years in the Western Pacific. So there's there's a lot more to it than just the warm water. 
and the El Nino, La Nina, and all the factors we talked about at the beginning of the season that go into these seasonal forecasts. But I, I don't want to say it's a complete total uh, bust of a season just yet. I mean, it's September 2nd. We still have a lot of, of, of time to get into stuff. We can still have a lot of storms. And so let's see how we play out here over the next four or five weeks. And then, and then we can have those discussions about what potentially went wrong here. Um, I think the chances of us getting a 20 name storm year is probably um, pretty remote at this point, but could we get 15, 16 storms? You know, that's another 10, 11 storms. I think that's still potentially on the table. And so um, we'll, we'll see. And uh, over the next few days, we'll be keeping an eye on the Caribbean at least. Yeah. Yeah. The chance of hitting those forecasted numbers are, is slipping away, which is a good thing. We don't want more. And the only one that matters is the one that's coming at, at you. So uh, uh, the forecast numbers just uh, really don't seem to bit pan out. It is a head scratcher considering, especially too, that it started off the season started off with such an anomaly with barrel, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, this is, uh, this is just setting the stage for what's about to happen. But uh, so far it hasn't panned out that way, but uh it is, uh, we we always say this and, and uh, we'll keep saying it all the way through tropical season, check back daily because things can change pretty quickly and stay with trusted sources like the Weather Insights Tropical Briefings, which you can do by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Feel free to share it with friends and family and make sure you enable notifications and join us for our next Weather Insights podcast. Jeff, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Labor Day, sir.